on having a laser disc player and it comes up with the E3 error. And what's trapped inside is your very expensive and exclusive copy of Speed E3. Or E0 this time. Huh. Z3 the last time. Anyway, let's open it up and see what the problem is. Okay, usually if the <clears throat> head has gotten stuck at the top, you can spin the little fella in here and drop the player. Just it's a cog over here, see? Problem is the moment is the disc is at the top and the laser is at the top. So if I do that, it's gonna cause the head to crash with the laser disc, which we don't want. Okay, let's see if we can get it to. Yep. It's going around for us. Okay, so I just what I did was I just literally gave the uh, head a little bit of a tip to get it to go past where it's getting stuck. Okay, first thing to do is to take the drive drawer out of here. So there are two clips, one's on this side and one is down here. So you'll see if I move this over. If I get it down there, there's a clip here. So you're basically moving that out of the way. And the same on the other side. So you gotta do both together. There's one here and one on the other side. So you got one here and one here. So my hand's gonna be in the way. I know somebody gave out of it before, but uh, I uh, had to put my hand in the way to get it out. So both clips, see these clips, this clip, this clip, just move them out of the way, the drive drawer will come out. On some older models, you'll have two screws here and here to stop that from falling out. I usually take this piece off, so I'm going to take this off now just to get it out of our way. Just makes it easier to access. I find it's easier to access. So, four screws here on this. This is actually the piece from our CLE 515. Um, because it wasn't there. That machine is basically not working. So <clears throat> the laser assembly is in underneath here. To remove and release the laser disc assembly, there's a little bar here, which most bas basically has to be popped up. And once that's popped up, the laser assembly will come out there. So we're just going to get a little flathead under here. So basically, you're putting the tip of your flathead or spade screw, whatever as close as you possibly can to the end and then basically give them a little bit of a turn and that will then pop up that bar for you. Bar's popped up. I'll bring it down this way so you can see it. So this bar here you're popping up. Come down here, just turn the screwdriver gently. Keep your finger on the end here and um, while you're doing that too so, that there's, not, so there's not too much pressure on it. Um, you want pressure obviously under here, but you don't want to strain the plastic on this end. So I usually put my finger on top of this piece and turn here gently. That way it's still lifting it out of there, but it's not going to come flying out and snapping off. You want it to be nice and sort of good, firm but steady pressure. How about that? And here's a better view of that part. So you put a screwdriver under here, lifting it. Keep your finger on top here and it'll pop out nicely. And the reverse is literally put the bar out, put the bar on top there, bar on top, and just push it down into place, and that'll be that. So at the back, the bar itself, it's hooked into a little bit of uh, plastic here at the back. Actually, it's hollow at the back of this. So basically, once you popped it out from the front part, you then pull the rod this direction. It'll then come out for you. And down here in the depths, see this piece here. This is your steel bar. When you're taking it out, you're pulling it this direction. So you're pulling it away from the black piece. And when you're putting it back, you're pushing it in on top of this. There's a hole at the end of the bar, so that'll let you to slide that back on there. Okay, now the laser assembly is on the bar. Uh, it's still attached to the cable, but I find this is the easiest way to take it out. So lift it out of there. Out it comes. There we are, there's our laser assembly. And basically this piece here at the back, you're just going to basically lift that out of there, like that, and she's released. So I reckon the laser assembly is cracked, and it is. There we are, that's our problem. It's basically not giving it enough uh, rigidity, so when it's getting to the top it's probably, you know, dropping a little bit, and it's not uh, holding on there tight as you see. Look, it's not a lot of movement there, look. That's, uh, yeah, it's cracked in two places, it's cracked here, and it's cracked in here. 
This is the M holder equivalent from Laser Parts, and um, I'm going to basically change out the existing M holder for the one that's in here. So this is the, the inverted inverter compass new one. I've actually got the cogs on this one ready to go. Look, that good, isn't it? That is clever. You got to admit that's clever. Woo wee! Very good, Nick as well, actually. Yeah. So we can use them. Or we can use the ones on it. When you get the M holder from Laser Parts, it's just this this basic grey plastic piece you're getting. You're not getting the cogs with it. The cogs must come off your original laser assembly. They're not part of the actual kit. Okay, so getting the screws out of this, take the bar out for a start. You put that to one side. First thing you want to do is take out this screw, and then take out this screw. There are two I generally take out first because if I take out this one first, I can't tend to get it past this one. So we'll do that now. Without getting my arm in the way. And then this one. So that's that screw out of there. Try hold on to the uh, M holder while you're doing this. The biggest risk here is going to be it shearing off at the back, which is what you don't want. Like, see, these, these screws must get jammed in here as well, which can be a real annoyance. A little bit of wiggle there. I think I might have got it now, did I? I have it now. Still stuck on there. That's disintegrating. Not to worry. I remove this one here. These are different sizes, so the two out of here, this one and this one, keep them to one side. It's actually stuck onto the top of my screwdriver. You'll then transfer the screws. Sorry, I'm actually lost to losing the cog there. Ooh, better check if it's not cog running around inside my machine. Um, okay, so there's two cogs usually on your M holder. Have a look in your drive if the cog is missing. It's probably fallen off. Get your new M holder. Place it onto the motor first, like this. Then place it down. Then take one of your screws for the motor itself. So you're doing this in the reverse of the way you took it off. When you're tightening these on, just tighten them on uh, just below hand tight. Don't over tighten them. When they start to resist, stop. There's really no need to, you know, double down on the amount of pressure you put on these screws because at the end of the day, the screws are made of metal, the M hole is made of plastic. And you're definitely going to break it if you go for it, like a mad loon. So I'll screw that one in there. If it's going to grab, is it going to grab? Have I got it correct? I have. That's good. This is all in one take, so it's always risky. There's a piece in here. The screw is jammed inside the old piece of M holder. That's the end of that. There's a piece of it there. Now the next two screws are the screws that hold the M holder down onto the actual laser assembly. So we'll put one in here. Oh, but he's, he's, he's slipping on that one. No, he's okay, he's got it. Yep, that's okay. Make sure it's, it's square down here as well, you see? Make sure it's all okay, it's all square. Taking care not to touch the lens on this. Do you remember in the, one of the last videos we were talking about the lenses actually? And the model. See this says A on this one, see? So like I said, I wonder if they revisions or the type of laser that's in them. I don't actually know, but I'm just curious. I noticed on the <clears throat> the 919s as in the past, was it D was written on them? So I'm just wondering, is that to indicate that's for the, the DVD or different type of laser? I, like I said, I managed to get that one to actually uh, read a, a, a laser disc, but uh, only once. Anyway, that's that. So there we are there, I've put a little bit of grease on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the assembly. So we want to put it in with a little groove that way. That's the way I've seen most of them coming down. Put it in here. Give a little bit of wiggle like this, twisting it. Let's get enough grease on. And that will be more than enough to keep that lubricated. So it's lithium grease you're using. Okay, it's somewhat in the reverse of what you've already done. So first thing you need to do is get the cable out of here. 
for the laser, which is easier than it looks. And once you have that out, I'm going to put that down there for one second. Let's catch it underneath that so it doesn't go flying off again. Anyway. Okay. On this here, there is a little clip, this black clip. Pick that up. So it's up in the up position. You then can get this cable. And my hand's right in the way there now. And put that into the socket. Push it down firmly. And that's that attached back again. Okay, so you're putting the assembly back in. I'm going to show you the other side in just a moment. And basically you want to make sure that the bar at the back is in first. So you're basically putting the bar back into the little receiver so the hole in the back of it is going to go in over the black piece at the back. So I'm going to try to get you in there as good as I can see it. Okay, so that's in there on that. I'm going to try to get a better angle of that now for you in a moment. Once that's in, you'll see the other end of the bar is here. It's up in the air at the moment. We want to basically push that into place. Use your finger. Now it's in place. And if you just gently touch on this, it shouldn't move. And you want to test to see if it's working, you can actually rotate that. See? Moving along the tooth of the gear at the bottom. I found the other gear just there a second ago as well. Here it is. It was just literally sitting inside the machine. So make sure you get these two gears back out before you... Uh, reassemble the machine. You don't want to be in there messing up your machine. So I'm going to show you the other side of this just so you can see where the laser is actually sitting, okay? As you can see there, it's sitting underneath that piece of steel, not on top of it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is put the drawer back in. So I'm going to just grab that now. It's behind me. It's behind you. So get that done. Okay, so it's just a gentle two clicks, that's it in, Let's push it in nice and gently, looks okay to me, sounds okay. Now don't forget to put the top piece on, but before we do that we're going to just basically turn the machine on and see if the laser reads, um, just basically let's see if the laser travels across the, the bar or whether it gets stuck or it makes any horrible noise before we go putting the assembly top on. Okay, so here we go. Yep, that's moving nicely. Yep, so I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the assembly cover back on here, which is basically the, if I, if I start spinning a disc without the top on, the disc will come flying off, whee, and take someone's head off. So we have to put the cover piece back on here, which is this bit, and then we're going to put a disc into the drive and see if it reads. And luckily enough, thank God, speed has been rescued, I think. So, you know, very important, we have speed out of the drive. You know, I'm down to my last four copies of speed, and, you know, once you get out to three copies, it, it, it's, you know, it's anybody's game that's going to happen then. And yes, terrible jokes are my speciality. So, uh, listen for more great tips about special jokes. So, I'm just putting the top piece back on here. This is the top clamp for the actual uh, laser disc. So, what happens is, when the disc goes in, it clamps between the two of these, the bottom and the top and it comes from the top and obviously to stop the disc becoming a lethal object going around the room Whew. like that film, what was that film called? I come in peace, you know I come in peace, you leave in pieces that's Arnold Schwarzenegger or something anyway, okay, so let's um, not Arnold Schwarzenegger in the film by the way I think it's Dolph Lugren, isn't it? so, what I'm going to do now is put the disc back in here and see what happens I tell you Touch and go. We're going to hit side two straight away. Uh, that way the machine is going to basically send the laser from the, the bottom to the top straight away. Once it does that, I'm going to basically hit side A. I get to send it back the other direction again. Um, so it's a good test to see if everything's okay. Now, unfortunately, this table isn't exactly level. So I'm going to just try and see if I can get a bit more level because it's not good for the drive to be off at a strange angle. Interestingly enough, the cable from the motherboard to the laser assembly wasn't connected correctly so it was telling me there was no laser that's present but yet the laser was moving back and forward so I suspected straight away that the cable wasn't connected right so if you have a situation where you've changed the M holder okay the laser was working beforehand stopped working you change the M holder because it's broken you have a situation then where 
it's no longer reading a disc go back and reseat the cable ribbon cable at the back of the actual laser assembly make sure it's put in correctly because if it isn't uh, if it's slightly out or slightly off you're gonna have a situation where it won't read a disc it'll just come up with an error saying no disc found so just to keep that in mind um, I know I said at the beginning about putting it in tightly I didn't do it tightly and that's what happened to me so what we're going to do now is as I said we're going to basically go to side B and see what happens okay here we go let's see if this works so it's going to basically spin the disc and then send the head up to the top of the drive let's see if this works yeah we're good we're there and it's reading so we're now going to basically get it to move along there nicely it's moving along reading chapter 10 nice and fast as I said before it should be fairly quick when it's coming to read these discs it shouldn't be taking forever if it is there's something wrong nice and quick that's quick enough okay I'm gonna send it back to side A now get it to read side A I'm reading side A so there we are a successful repair thank god so another drive saved from the scrap heap this is a CLD D925 it'll play both PAL and NTSC it has a couple of features and uh, I'm going to show you some of the features on the back of this drive because some people have questions about um, what's the best connection and uh, you know why should it connect to this or why should it connect it to that so we're going to have a look at the back of the drive okay just briefly on the back of the drive we have one two three four different outputs for video so generally you use these two where you have a VCR on the chain and uh, it would allow you to because like most TVs would only have one uh, of these SCART sockets on them or AV Euro sockets or Pritel I think is the other name of them so it would only have one of these sockets so it basically meant that you could daisy chain from your VHS drive through one of these and then straight into the television. I personally quite like them. To me, they're like the uh, precursor to HDMI. Everything was on them. So you had video and audio and 5.1 if you liked, and composite on them and RGB and fantastic system, I think. A bit big uh, compared to HDMI, but fantastic all the same. Then you have the direct uh, video, as it were. Now, as far as I know, the card on this will still try to digitally enhance this still try to digitally enhance this because the disc is basically this format so this is a, an enhancement um, and this bottom one down here is for AC3 that is the Dolby digital discs you'll see so you'll see a disc there that will say in it uh, Dolby AC3 or Dolby uh, digital surround uh, or Dolby digital so you need to have an AC3 output you need to have a demodulator as I said in the previous video and then you can use that then to output the digital signal to your modern amp. The one over here is also for audio. This is a digital audio system. So this will allow you to play back a DTS disc on this, an NTSC DTS disc if you like. And uh, it'll then output digital audio. Any standard disc with uh, digital audio on it will also output via this. You can also use the analog on this uh, particular machine too. Um, again, this is a stereo audio output, but you'll still find that the stereo audio output in this, the PCM as if it were, is a hell of a lot better than you know some of the downloading streaming systems you'll find. Well, I find anyway. Whereas this here, in theory, should be the purest of signals you'll get out of this drive. But uh, it's not always the case. Results may vary. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video on this little repair. And, um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for the moment. Bye-bye.